Our first question today is from Casey. And we did have the recent VIP Q&A questions where not everyone got a chance to ask it in person. So we offered that they send them in to me. And this is the question that Casey sent. I'm trying to understand how foundational physics fits in with MBT. I've been watching your talks on the double slit experiment. I understand the experiments and I think I understand your explanation of the result. But what I need clarification on is this. Was the wave function and the Schrodinger equation that describes its evolution always part of the rule set, foundational to the rule set, or were these mathematical tools added in later by the system to help solve and explain this logical conflict in the reality between particle and wave? Thank you so much. Okay, well, it was always fundamental and always a part of the rule set in the way the, the virtual reality is, is computed, that this reality is probability based. It's not from the ground up. It's not a deterministic simulation that starts with the tiniest particles and then bigger particles and eventually subatomic and atomic and molecules. And it, that kind of a simulation would be way too difficult and way too inefficient. So our reality is computed with statistics and probability. And because the rendering engine also has the rule set, the science, the complete rule set, it can generate these probabilities very accurately. And it can model all the things that we do here very accurately since it's modeling it in the first place in order to create it in a virtual reality. Another way of looking at it is if you look at many worlds, there's a new universe every time something changes. That gets to be a little ridiculous in that every time some electron somewhere in the universe changes its uh, spin, a whole new universe has to be created, a new physical universe. Well, that's kind of silly and not very cost effective. This model maintains all the same information, but in terms of probability. So my model looks at everything that's possible and what is the probability of each of those things. So what are all the possibilities and what are the probabilities of those possibilities? So instead of creating new universes all the time, you simply sort through the probabilities. It's a very quick and easy way to assess all the possibilities and probabilities. So yes, the the fact that this world is based on probability and statistics is fundamental to the world. Now, Schrodinger's equation is a wave equation. There's no physical wave. It's just a wave equation, and the wave is a probability wave. And it assesses the probability, say, at various places or in various situations. What's the probability that say a particle will be found here or there or someplace else. So it looks at all the possibilities and then from those possibilities it gives each one probabilities and then it makes some kind of random selection from that. Well, that is fundamental in the sense that it is working with the natural constitution of the reality. Okay, but there's nothing particularly fundamental about Schrodinger's equation. There's other ways to assess probability. There's other ways to look at what the possibilities are and probabilities are. So Schrodinger's equation was theorized first because they saw that probability was, was inherent in the problem. So they started looking at it from a probabilistic viewpoint and it worked they were able to compute the, the right answers. So that became kind of the, the instrument of choice. Now, I should also point out that Heisenberg had a matrix method of coming up with the same thing. And there is no wave function, and it's not at all 
the same way. It's done in a different way, but it gets the same right answer. So you see, there's nothing really fundamental about the choice of a wave function. It's not that wave functions exist in our reality and, uh, and they're fundamental. They're not. It's just a mathematical way of approaching the problem. Heisenberg approached it another way, a different way, but both computed the same answers, so they were equivalent to each other. His was a matrix method and uh, Schrodinger's was a probability wave function method. The physics community decided to pick one and go with it, and they picked Schrodinger's. In hindsight, probably a mistake, but that's what they picked and that's what they've gone forward with. That the reality is probabilistic, that's fundamental. Schrodinger's equation? Not really. It's just one of several ways that somebody could solve those probability problems. What was fundamental and what was not? Well, I think you, you did hit on the mathematical tools that were mm -hmm. um, later used. I remember you doing that Schrodinger experiment in your MBT science trilogy mm -hmm. and how you did that real time. And most yeah. people are confused about that Schrodinger's cat experiment. They're not uh, expecting that that can be done real time without a cat the way you did it. <laughs> yeah. So that was, yeah, yeah, that was unique in itself, you know. Yeah, it's, it's just straightforward probability calculations. Mm -hmm. you know, there's nothing magical about Schrodinger's cat. It's just probability. The, the cat has a certain probability of survival. And that measurement is made when somebody looks at the cat, when they open the door and see what's inside, a dead cat or a live cat. But until then, it's unknown. So until then, it's just probability. The fundamental idea is there is no cat. Yeah. There is no box. This is a virtual reality. There's only a data stream, and you interpret that data stream. So there really is no cat. So the, the way the reality works is such that it calculates the probability of that cat being dead or alive. And it does it like this. It looks at all the possibilities, some of which are dead, some of which are alive. It looks at the probability of all of those. And it does a random draw from a probability distribution of the possibilities. And when it does that random draw, then at that instant, that defines whether the cat is dead or alive. So if you open that door, just as you open it and you look in, that, that measurement is made, a random draw from a probability distribution of the possibilities. And if that random draw pulls out cats alive, then when you look in, you'll see a live cat. If that random draw pulls out a cat is dead, when you look in, there'll be a dead cat. So that's just the way it's rendered. That's the way in which the system renders what happens next. So it was just a, you know, Schrodinger uh, talked about that. It was kind of tongue in cheek. He was, he was trying to be silly on purpose because he was, he was pointing out how this new science of quantum theory would come to the conclusion that the cat was both alive and dead at the same time. And that sounded, well, how is that possible? That's amazing. But that's not really true. The cat had a probability of being both alive and dead at any given time. That's really what was going on. And I just did those, I computed those probabilities for cats under certain conditions. And then you could see the outcome at any instant of time. It would have a display of how many of the cats were dead and how many of them were alive. So you'd pick one to look into, and it would do that little calculation and tell you whether you saw a dead cat or a live cat. So that's, It demonstrated really well the probability yeah. uh, of it. I thought mm -hmm. that was really fascinating. Well, I'll read you the end of it, but I think you've answered his question. What I need is a clarification on, was the wave function and the Schrodinger equation that describes its evolution always part of the rule set? foundational rule set, and, and you did say that, or were these yeah. mathematical tools added later in, by the system to help solve and explain this logical conflict in the reality between particle and wave? Okay. 
Okay, things weren't added to the system. The system has always been the way it is. That's just the way it was put together. It was the most efficient and effective way that it could configure itself to do what it needed to do, which was to offer individuated units of consciousness meaningful choices so they could evolve. So it worked how it worked. It worked with probability. Now, Schrodinger's equation is not fundamental. There's other ways to solve that problem that work as well. So people made up Schrodinger's equation and Heisenberg's method, and there's a couple of other statistical and probability. And those followed Schrodinger's um, equation? Heisenberg's well, the, followed it? Well, Heisenberg didn't follow Schrodinger. He had a completely unique, different thing. Mm -hmm. His wasn't a wave function. It didn't work that way. It, it was a, a matrix calculation. And in any case, and there's other ways. You can, you know, probability and statistics is a pretty broad field. There's lots of ways to approach problems. And other ways will work as well. That's the way it works. But the system was always like it was. It didn't change to suit the way people measure things. People had to measure things to suit the way the system worked. And Schrodinger's methodology was just one way to do that, but it's the one everybody decided to work with. So it kind of became popular and everything else was forgotten. Well, I think the scientists liked Schrodinger because it seemed more physical. They could imagine in their minds this probability distribution moving around and finally, as the measurement was made, turning into a physical particle or not. So that, that was easier for people, less abstract in their mind. They could see that. Now, that's not what happens. It's not that there's a probability wave that turns into a particle. That's silly. Probability waves are just mathematical constructs. They don't turn into physical particles. But that was kind of the metaphor. And with Heisenberg, it was more abstract. There wasn't a nice little metaphor like that that people could come up with. So I think that's why Schrodinger's method worked out. Schrodinger got a little more mileage out of it with all of that drama that he added. All right. Well, thank you. I think you covered that very well. Would you like to see a better world? Get a better perspective. Balance your intellect with intuition and explore your true nature with the Exploring Consciousness and Everything Paranormal program with Thomas Campbell. In this program, you will have the benefit of Tom's vast experience and learn to access point consciousness, communicate with the larger consciousness system, remote view, use your natural ability to heal with intent, and explore reality in the out-of-body state. His famous binaural beats are included. Details are in the description below. Thank you. I and MBT Events hope you like this video. If you do, then you should consider being a Patreon member because Patreon members get early access to our special content. You will also be able to get your questions answered by me in special Q&A sessions. And most importantly, your contribution as a patron member will enable us to produce the content that you're looking for, so thank you.